Hello, everybody. I got to be the venture capitalist here, so I wore green color of money just for you. Um, great to be here today. This is such a wonderful event. So thank you to Peggy and everybody at NCQA for, uh, for making it possible. Uh, I wanted to talk about all the changes that are happening in healthcare today. We see lots of changes going on around us. And when we really like them, we call them disruptive innovation. And when we don't like them, we call them disruption. And sometimes we make a lot of changes, and a lot of changes are happening. And all we're really doing is just moving deck tears on, around on the Titanic. And of course, we all know that that is a fairly futile exercise, because the Titanic's going to sink anyway. I'm not going to sing for you, thank God for you. Um, but uh, if I could have played my music here, I would have played Landslide, that line where they say, I, I've been afraid of changing because I built my life around you. And for many of us, the changes underway are very disruptive to our lives and to our careers and what we're used to. And for others, the changes that are going on in healthcare are a huge improvement. So let's dive a little bit into some of those changes that we're seeing. Now, how many of you guys remember Calvin and Hobbes, that old cartoon? Okay, thank you for being old enough to remember that. Um, my favorite cartoon strip from Calvin and Hobbes is the one where he invents a magical transmogrifier. And the transmogrifier is basically a big cardboard box where you can use it to turn into anything you want. Well, it seems to me that after many decades of kind of ignoring each other and trying to build you know, fences around instead of bridges across, the various stakeholders in healthcare, not so much the patients, but everybody else, are walking into the transmogrifier with great speed and without fear. And while I often am out there whining that nothing really ever changes in healthcare, it simply isn't true if you back up and look at the big picture. There's major transmogrifying going on. And the companies that are around healthcare and the organizations that are around healthcare are doing a lot to redefine who they are and what they offer to the market. It used to be if that you were a healthcare provider, you were a healthcare provider, you provided healthcare services, end of story. If you're a payer and insurer, you provided an insurance. If you were a retail pharmacy, you sold retail drugs and other stuff like Band-Aids. And if you're a medical device company, you're out there with your, your widgets. If you're a drug company, you're drugs. And if you're a tech company, you're building whatever the next gadget is for the kids who know how to use them, much as John just said. Um, the prevailing attitude at that time was, this is my handy dandy you know, business model and the way I do things, back off. Thank you very much, everybody else. But today, if you look around you, it's pretty clear that the rules have entirely faded away. It looks like some magician mage, wage, pff, waved his magic wand over all of the healthcare industry and turned everyone from women to tigers, presto changeo. Uh, and just like Siegfried and Roy would have done it. It's so weird and also so logical in some ways to see what's going on around us. The whole thing really reminds me of these old time children's flip books. You know, those, who remembers those? Oh, please, God, a bigger number. OK, good. And you know, those books where you change a piece of the page, and you can like match a rhino's back end with a platypus's front end and make a, a whole new animal out of it, right? Well, let me take you on a bit of a flip book tour. Uh, be, be mindful that you can't match back halves to back halves, and there's no promise of reproductive viability here. So for starters, health systems who have become somewhat fed up with pharma companies charging them lots of money have started turning themselves into drug companies. Yes, actually, that's true. Uh, a group of 300 hospital systems led by Intermountain Healthcare formed a company called Civica. Have you guys heard about Civica? It's a generic drug company where they'll be manufacturing and selling generic drugs to the, to the hospital industry, bypassing the, the drug companies bypassing the PBMs, so they believe charge them too much. And while hospitals have been doing compounding for many, many years, they've never done something like this. This is a really new development. And at the same time, tech companies, most of whom we would never have suspected gave a damn about healthcare, are turning themselves into healthcare companies faster than Amazon Prime delivers. So for instance, you know Amazon for, has decided to become some sort of drug distribution company. We don't know the details. Um, but this further amplifies the ability to, to bypass the traditional pharmacy benefit managers. And oh, by the way, Amazon, a tech company, is also a major supplier of medical devices, both under their own private label and through other distribution deals that they do. 
In case you think this is an original idea, it's not. Alibaba, which is even a much bigger company than Amazon in China, has been doing the same stuff for years. They've got a major pharmaceutical distribution business, and they're actively building a health insurance product. So this is not a US phenomenon only. This is a worldwide phenomenon. And not to be outdone in the tech world, Apple acquired Bedit, and you may have heard about their watch. That's a sleep tracking company, by the way. You may have heard about the watch they've got. Uh, that does all sorts of healthcare things. And they've also become a bit of a quasi contract research organization with Research Kit. And on top of that, they acquired a company called Glimpse, which helps you track your medical records from all your different EMRs, in theory, anyway. Alphabet, who we talked about a little bit earlier uh, with Vivian, acquired Synosis, which is a sensor company that helps you get biometric information. Alphabet also spun out Verily, where Vivian works. It's just an entire healthcare company, right? So five years ago, you never would have expected the Googles and Apples of the world to be going to the FDA for product approvals. Google stu stuck its toe in the health insurance waters, too. They bought a 10% interest in an insurance company that's kind of a nouveau model called Oscar. And they're collaborating in some way, I don't know what it is exactly, to build a data infrastructure to you know, make healthcare great again or some, something like that. And <laughs> I imagine, I <laughs> but seriously, Oscar is kind of interesting. It's leveraging technology for everything from scheduling to customer service to predictive analytics. And I can only imagine a world where you could integrate their Google GPS into this. So when you, one of their covered members, orders a pizza, it sends an electric shock through your phone <laughs> to help bring your A1C down. You may be surprised to hear that Facebook is working and collaborating with NYU to improve medical imaging reading, as particularly with MRI. They've collected three million images, the livers and the liver and the kidneys and the brain, and they're looking for ways to leverage their advanced AI group because apparently the voting business is not working out so well. <laughs> Some believe that the most forward-thinking company in the country is in healthcare, in healthcare, is Comcast. <laughs> How about that? They're building their own system for employee health, they're building provider networks, clinics, care management systems, the works. They've done a major collaboration with Independence Blue Cross uh, out there in Pennsylvania to, to collaborate to bring healthcare content into 60 million homes. You may curse them for making you wait all day to watch Orange is the New Black, but they are busy disintermediating, disintermediating the healthcare elite, so cut them some slack. And here's a random one. We all know uh, that retail has shown a great interest in healthcare, but Best Buy just acquired Great Call, a provider of healthcare technologies and services for uh, seniors, for older Americans. So now you can go to Best Buy and you can get yourself a washing machine, and one of those damn iPhone recharging cords, and some healthcare monitoring on your way out the door. Back to our transmogrifying. Pharmaceutical companies are moving in the other direction. They're turning into software and services companies. Uh, while most of these companies never had a data, data scientist anywhere near their buildings, now they're hiring them in droves. And companies like Roche are actively acquiring companies like Flatiron and MySugar, software services companies that come with data systems that the pharma companies never really thought about before, and they're using it for all sorts of things. Sanofi is out there investing in blockchain, as you heard just talked about, in AI and virtual clinical trials. Atsuka's launched a drug that has an embedded sensor, and Novartis and Roche have launched major di digital technology innovation sites around the world. Medical device companies are becoming service companies. We're really seeing a gamut of stuff on the transmogrifying front. Retail pharmacies are probably the biggest changers. CVS has announced, as you know, that it's, well, sorry, it's actually merged with Aetna, and building, in addition to that, an in-home kidney dialysis device. CVS is building an in-home kidney dialysis device that they're going to take to the FDA, and they can deliver your home with Cheetos and diapers or whatever else you need. They're also becoming a health insurance offerer, of course, through their Aetna merger. But in response, Walmart, who's an interesting organization, has whispered its intent to purchase Humana, whether that will happen or not, who knows. But it's an incredibly interesting strategy, I think, this integration, because they're also healthcare providers, as we just discussed. So if you've got clinics and insurance together, in the case of Walmart, and you're controlling the front door of healthcare, in the case of CVS, Net, et cetera, the healthcare systems, the hospitals you negotiate with should be very, very nervous. Insurance companies are also becoming healthcare providers. Obviously, we talked about that with Aetna. 
But how about this? United Health Group has acquired 30,000 providers over the last few years who now work directly for them. They've acquired several hundred outpatient surgery centers doing over a million procedures a year. And they have the ability, they say, to serve 70% of the US population today as a provider. That's a stunning you know, number compared to what they used to be. Humana's hot on their heels buying up practices in Texas and Florida. They also bought Kindred, a home health care company. So now if you control two of the front doors of health care, the home and the outpatient clinic, you're kind of talking Karl Marx style controlling the means of production here. You control where people go to the hospital or if they go to the hospital. And of course, providers are becoming insurers. There's hundreds of ACOs, and something like 52% of all health insurance products on the market are now provider-based insurance products. And for all we know, retail pharmacies could join up with investment bankers and with you know, uh, internet retailers and create the scariest new monster of all, the whatever that is, um, which is you know, scaring the hell out of most of people in healthcare right now. Uh, Probably for good reason, because you know usually whatever Amazon and Berkshire Hathaway do goes pretty well. Uh, so far, I've not seen any insurance companies turning into drug companies, but it is very early in the year still. There's time. Oh my God, I'm exhausted. Um, that is a lot of transmogrifying, and here's my question. Is all of this good? Is this disruption changing things for the better? Or once again, are we just moving deck tears around on the Titanic? It's really hard to say, considering how early we are in this cycle. By the way, this guy is the producer of the movie Titanic in real life, and that is a genuine simulated Titanic jack chair, so there. Um, and when you think about players like Walmart and Amazon that have com consumers complete trust, and Toyan talked about trust earlier, it's such an important part of the consumer experience. You can envision major improvements in customer experience, in, um, uh, in value creation and data usage to create great products that patients really like. No one has this, the ability to move markets more than groups like Walmart and Amazon. They do it every day. And Walmart is the second largest employer in the nation after the federal government. So they have a real stake in the outcome of making healthcare better. But and considering the number of people that flow through these organizations and who interact with them, you can really have a great opportunity to integrate social determinants of health and other things that aren't normally standard in the healthcare system. I can see, at least in theory, why this vertical integration on a mass scale can be a good thing and why it would have the, uh, the advantage for, for patients in many cases. Groups like CVS, Walmart, and Amazon may end up with large outpatient networks and telemedicine wrapped in an insurance plan, directly accessing lower cost pharmaceuticals and medical devices. There's potential for something really good here. But I can also see how savings would quickly transmogrify into added profits for these newly created entities. Just imagine this emerging cradle to grave strategy. The same company that delivers you into the world can sell you the junk food that gives you your diabetes. They can manufacture and sell you the insulin to treat it and do the surgery when your foot gives out later in life. They can provide the monitoring to know if you're complying with your medical regimen, which they also manage. And hopefully, as a result, you will live longer. But if not, conveniently, Walmart already sells <laughs> the end of the story. So if all else fails, you can go home and watch Orange is the New Black, assuming the Comcast guy ever arrived, and think to yourself, what a world. Wow, what is, this is a major disruption going on through healthcare. We have to get real, though. It's what worries me about this is monopolistic practices are well known to raise prices, not reduce them. We're already seeing this through hospital mega mergers that have been taking place for years. And it used to be if you were a player in healthcare and you figured out how to reduce costs, you reduce somebody else's profit, right? But now, it's rapidly changing to a world where if you reduce costs, you're increasing your own profit. But you could share that with consumers, but that's no fun, is it? So I think that's the crux of the debate right there. Are we really doing something that makes a good difference? So I gave so many examples of what's happening, because you can see this massive convergence going on, and it's remarkable to think how much is changing in such a short time, really. Um, and we have to think about what we want healthcare to look like before it's too late. Uh, this is a, Amir Rubin, some of you may know from One Medical, talked to me about how when he started in healthcare, 
the industry made up 10% of GDP and it was unsustainable and then it rose to 15 and 20% and that was considered unsustainable. And now people are still screaming it's unsustainable. And he's right, it's totally unsustainably low. It's gonna keep going up unless something changes. I mean, Newton was wrong, not everything that goes up has to come down. But if we aren't thoughtful, we were gonna go, we're gonna go up to, to 50 plus. And if we're really gonna reduce costs and improve quality, we have to hope the metamorphoses we see are more like the caterpillar turning into the butterfly and, and not like the beetle turning into the worm, turning into the beetle, turning into the worm. And that's my worry. This could all turn out to be great or it could turn out to be kind of a mess. So we need to not just hope, but expect, demand, and act to make sure that these changes lead to better outcomes for patients, better access, quality, cost, and better satisfaction for all players in the industry to, to, to perform well. We need to have an ongoing dialogue about what an integrated healthcare system really is, because this is well beyond what Kaiser ever imagined. And we need to maybe take solace in the words of Ziggy Marley, who said, change for the better and not for the worse. Let's stand together and not break our curse. Uh, thank you so much for your time today. Take care.